Hey everyone, welcome back to the Compact YouTube channel. If you are new here, then make sure you like and subscribe for everything competing, bodybuilding related. So today I'm gonna to be answering some of your questions on our Instagram story. I've left it completely blank, so let's go straight into it. So the first question I've got is three things every competitor should have a second pair of on show day. So ideally you could probably have a second pair of like most things, but I would say like hands down, the most important thing is your shoes, especially if you have strapped shoes. So a Flare 401, a Cocktail 508, Shoe Fairy Olympian, Majesty 508, any heel you have with a strap, you should be taking a second pair with you. Now in an ideal situation, you would have what I would call like your show day pair, and then you would have your like pros in practice pair which you've been wearing for probably like all of your preps so 110 percent you need to be bringing a second pair of pros and shoes i've seen it so many times where someone has panicked and they've been throwing their shoes on way too fast and then the strap breaks and they haven't got a backup so even if you can't afford like a second pair of shoes then even just buying the, det the detachable ankle straps will be absolutely perfect so i would say 100 percent you need to have some a second pair of shoes ideally if you can buy a second pair of earrings then that's also really really handy um sometimes if you are not careful with how you store your jewelry like they might potentially like break um as i said that's super super rare but it's just good to kind of have like backup so i would say your shoes and i would say your jewelry as well okay the next question is what to be aware of when competing abroad not knowing anyone so i wouldn't say um it's too much of a big deal if you don't know anyone, whether it's competing in your own country or competing abroad. Um, I would probably say, don't like worry too much about not knowing anyone, whether it's the UK or whether it's somewhere else. Like you're going to meet people regardless. And I definitely think when you are competing abroad, like there's so many more things to think about. You're probably not gonna get a chance to relax as much or sit down as much um, in comparison to if you're like in your own country. So if I was to say like what to be aware of when competing abroad is obviously at the moment like checking like COVID restrictions if there are any, um, potentially visa situation or like problems that can actually arise. And I'd say like just make sure you're booking, like you just have all your details. Like if you got a show on a Saturday, then you know when you arrive on Thursday, where you need to be, how you're gonna get there, the location. Like just plan every single day out and you'll be absolutely fine. I just think enjoying the experience as much as you can is really, really important. And in terms of like not knowing anyone, we all know what happens backstage. You end up making the best friends and the people that you kind of resonate with anyway. So I would say they're the main things to be aware of. The next thing is I have ugly tan lines from a sunburn. Girl, I feel you, it's not fun, especially when you're pale. Uh, will this be visible with the tan on and what should I do? So if the sunburn has already happened, there's unfortunately there's not a lot like you can do. Um, the main thing I would say is aloe vera gel, like slam the aloe vera gel on you as much as possible because that's gonna bring out a lot of the redness um, and it's gonna make massively cool down your skin and help to repair the sunburn. It kind of depends on the severity of the sunburn and the tan, tan lines, whether you'll be able to see it or not. Like if they're very, very faint and say you've got your one week out and you've noticed you've got like some faint tan lines, they will most likely fade. And then by the time that your tan's on, you'll probably be fine. But if they are very, very severe, I will be very honest, there's very, very little that the tanner will be able to do to actually fix and replicate that. Um, so it's just a case of hoping that the sunburn will go down, loads of cool showers, loads of aloe vera, um, and just in future, if you know that you are prone to getting sunburn and you're close to a show and it's super, super sunny, like put the your SPF should be like the priority. And to be honest, like, I don't go out in the sun as much, um, especially when I know, like I know my skin, it's very pale. Uh, my mum's a natural redhead, so I know that if I don't put a lot of SPF on, I know if I don't stay out the sun, I will most likely burn and I take ages to get repaired. So as I say, I hate saying it depends, but in this situation, it would definitely depend on how much you are sunburned. But as I say, aloe vera, SPF, cold showers um and just in future just know that you've just basically just got to stay 
indoors for all the time. Okay, the next few ones are kind of like skin prep, hair removal related. There is actually a full episode that I've done with Jenny Hamilton that I will leave somewhere. Um, I'll leave in the episode notes, so I'll quickly, quickly go through this. So one question that someone's put is, is shaving better or hair removal better for skin prep? This is gonna depend again. So I'm gonna take me, for example. I have very dark hair. I have very thick hair. So I personally find hair removal is useless on me. Unless it's for like my face, it works well. But if I'm trying to use hair removal cream for my legs, it's just not like, my hair's too thick, it's not going to work. Whereas shaving works well. But my most preferred option is waxing, just because I personally find when I shave, like literally the next day, my hair's already starting to grow back. So it is very much like knowing your own body and knowing like, if you know that hair removal is the best for you and it lasts the longest, then you know that hair removal is gonna be the best. But if you know that shaving's good, do shaving. But at the same time, I know a lot of people where they shave closer to their show day and their skin's like really, really sensitive and it comes out in like red blotches. So it's kind of understanding like, what do I typically like to use when I'm not competing? Or if you've got a photo shoot, like what is going to be the best like form of hair removal is going to be so dependent on yourself. Like I have friends that have got blonde hair, it's really fine, so they can use hair removal no problem. But for me personally, unless it's laser, which I've done like way before the show, I'm gonna be waxing because I know that's the only thing that's actually going to last the longest without me actually stressing about it. So basically go with what works for your own body and what you know works well. The next one is prepping your skin for a show, what to do. Again, I'm gonna leave the full episode down in the notes, but exfoliate, be ahead of time, and watch the video, and it'll give you every single detail you need to know about it. Okay, the next question, I feel like this could be a separate video, uh, is the perfect tan routine before, just right before the show and after. You're gonna hate me, everyone. It depends again. So. Some people, the typical like tan routine that happens is that you exfoliate your, your skin for a good amount of time, and then the day before your show, you will go in for what is called your base coat, which is basically like, as it says, the base coat that you need to put on your skin, um, so the top coat tan can sit perfectly on you. So you will probably go like in that afternoon, evening, um, before your show. And then the next morning, like the morning of your show, you won't shower that tan off. And then you'll go back in for your top coat and then you're basically good to go on stage and you have your glaze. When you are after the show, the best thing you need to be doing is getting in the shower and basically like just putting like some light shower gel on you and just staying in the shower until the water goes clear and then you know that all the residue tan is basically off your skin and then from there, depending on how close your next show is, you want to be exfoliating just gently and you want to be keeping on top of your skin prep and moisturization as much as possible. When it gets into more details, it's if you've got like really pale skin, um, if you know that your skin, like there are the very rare occasion actually, this is worth mentioning, that some people are actually allergic to something in the tan called DHA. Um, as I say, it's extremely, extremely rare, but it can happen. Um, so if you are, if you've never had like a tan ever, I would see if you can try and do a little bit of a patch test just to double check that your skin doesn't react or anything like that. Um, so I would probably leave what I'm going to do actually, I'm gonna leave the tanning blogs that we'd have done previously. Um, but any other questions, then you can always like to drop us a message on Instagram or we're more than happy to help because I do find with tanning, it can be a bit more person dependent. Okay, what style heel would you recommend for first timers? Feel like this is a very loaded question. I could go on forever. Um, I would say, if I had to summarize this, the styles that I would say are good for first timers, I would probably say a flare because that's actually what I started in, and I found that amazing because I was so bad in wearing heels, which is hilarious now because I literally like no heels like the back of my hand. Um, but I would say a flare for eight is a very, 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 very good option, especially if you are someone like myself who isn't good at wearing heels. Like, I wasn't born good at wearing heels. I didn't start wearing heels until I started competing, really, which I would say I was 20, 21. 
Um, whereas most people, like, they're wearing heels when they're, like, 14. Um, so, yeah, I would say the Flare 408 is a very, very good option. Um, and then you've got the Cocktail 508, the Majesty 508, and the Glory 508 are very, very good options as well. Um, they're very sturdy, got a good platform, um, and they don't really squish your feet in too much. So I would say, like, if I had to generalise it, that would be the best way. But there is so much information on the website, and also, if you are unsure, like, ask the Instagram girls, like my compact girls are amazing. They will ask you what federation you're competing in, they'll ask you your category, they'll ask you if you're wearing wide, if you typically wear like wide, narrow, like normal whip shoes. Um, so yeah, I would say in summary, you've got the Flare, Cocktail, Majesty, Glory. Like they are good ones that I find first time is really, really like wearing. Next question. Got two more left. How long should your off season be? This will literally depend again. Um, I personally, for me, I like being able to have a whole year off stage and then the next year going back on stage. There are some people that only do an off season for a really small period of time. They might only do like three to six months. So they might, they might have like their last show is like October and then by May like they're competing again so they've only got like a couple of months of off season. Um, that works for some people. For me I just like having a longer period of time and I do think I know I've still got a lot of room to grow so that kind of warrants that long off season phase. Um, if you're a first timer and you're listening to this then I would say you have to have at least like a good year of training consistently and like being in, a, in an off season like behind you before you even consider competing because I think people underestimate the amount of muscle um, that you actually need in order to be competitive whereas I know some people where they are a pro for example um, they've got enough muscle um, they're not particularly looking to kind of gain much more muscle then they don't need to have a massive off season or a very long one they might just do a really, really short time and that's it whereas you know there are some people that are on the other end of the spectrum and they do like two year off seasons like i know a lot of guys that they commit to an off season they do at least a good three years because that's realistically how long it's going to take for them to be competitive so how long your off season should be it is the case of like speaking to your coach um and them just being completely honest and completely tra transparent with you um to figure out what is going to be the best thing for your physique but i personally find having a whole year off season and then the next year coming back to prep I find for me that's a nice break um, to kind of go get some normality, um, have good energy, you know, maintain a good relationship with food. Like I've just found that's my flow and that's what I kind of like to do. Whereas I know some people are different. So I would just say speak to your coach um, and they'll be able to kind of advise you like the best way to go about it. Okay, last one. We have advice for starting a business from scratch. How long you got? I, I I feel like there's so many different things I could probably say with this one. Um, but one that I don't hear, the piece of advice I don't hear many people say, but I think it's so important, is in the UK anyway, there are every single like county council has like their own business resources like outlet, which is designed to help people whether they are a startup, whether they've been going for a year, two years, five years, ten years. And I found that so, so helpful when I was setting up Compact for the first time. This is before it launched. I went to every single like business seminar and they were all free as well. Um, you had a business mentor that like helped you talk through things. And I quickly realized like the bits of my business that I had no idea what to do. And it's kind of having someone there that's really experienced, knows what they're doing. They can kind of guide you. Um, so they, they can do anything from like HR, finance, marketing, uh, brand, website, like the whole shebang. But I do think if you are starting a business, you there are going to be bits in your business that you either hate or you're not very good at or you don't understand because you've just never like had to learn it. So for me, if you're starting a business from scratch and especially if you're doing it by yourself, like quickly understand like where you really need to start like learning or going to a lot of seminars for. Um, so for me, like I came from a digital marketing background, so I, I still enjoy doing the marketing seminars and the website seminars, but for me, it was more logistics, um, HR, like how do I manage people, like all that stuff I didn't really know how to do. So 
that would be my biggest piece of advice because I don't think, like, I don't, I never hear it, but I just think, why is no one saying this? Like, I, of course you've got to enjoy it. Um, but I do think from the start, getting as much knowledge as you can is definitely, definitely going to be helpful. So that is pretty much all the questions. There were a lot of skin prep ones that I did miss, but as I say, please do go and watch that video that we have done um, and head over to the blogs as well. There's so much information, but if we have missed anything, I hope we haven't, but if we have missed anything on YouTube or on the website, then you can always, always message us. Like, I cannot stress this enough. There is no silly question. There's no silly question. There's gonna be so many questions that you have about competing, there always will be. Um, but hopefully through like our experience and our knowledge, like we can be able to help you the best way possible. So you hopefully don't make all the mistakes that we did um, and you can really make sure that you bring your very best and you enjoy as much of the process as possible. So thank you so much for listening. Um, if you do like it, then go and like and subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next video.